It's from a, a study titled Low Carbohydrate Diets and Men's Cortisol and Testosterone Systemic, uh, Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis. And they state that 27 studies were included with a total of 309 participants. Short-term, low versus high carbohydrate diets moderately increased resting cortisol, whereas long-term, low carbohydrate diets had no consistent effect on resting cortisol. Of course, this is what Rob's been talking about. And the next piece they say is that low versus high carbohydrate diets resulted in much higher post-exercise cortisol after long duration exercise, which is just over 20 minutes. And this was in both the long term and short term, is that they were noticing this higher post exercise cortisol. So, again, just coming back to the same idea that we are less resilient to stress and much deeper in that stress pathway to begin with. And so, we'll be increasing catecholamines and cortisol to a much greater extent when we're on a low carbohydrate diet. Yep. And as you were saying, also, this is why we see this. Like we've seen this, you, you know, a lot of times in people coming from carnivore or other versions of low carb diets. Fasting glucose goes up and up and up. Cortisol goes up and up and up over time. Thyroid goes in the tank. All of that is is due to this excess stress, the excess glucagon, and then later on the excess cortisol, the reduced thyroid activity, all that. Yeah, and you're seeing like I've seen tons of clients come to me, and their glu- their cortisol isn't out of reference range, but it's in the top of the reference range, and that's that's right. important to point out. So, are they Cushingoid? No. <laughs> but it's still excessively high cortisol. There's a lot of steps before Cushing's. <laughs> well, and they have the symptoms of it too. It's like, I can't sleep at night, you know, or like I'm right. waking up at four or five o'clock in the morning every day and I can't get back to sleep. And it's like, that is a, that is an elevated cortisol response. Like that is hand, like that's textbook elevated cortisol response. It's like insomnia and then also the manic moods and whatnot. So like you see, right. you see that, you see that in these different states. And then, the other thing that goes with this as well is in a lot of these, the keto and whatnot and whatnot states, you see the elevations in blood glucose. You see over time, you see the elevations in blood lipids. Like those also go hand in hand with glucagon and cortisol. If I gave if I gave you a glucocorticoid drug, I would give you hyperglycemia and I would also produce a hyperlipidemia. Those are side effects of those. So could is this always the case in the low carb keto diet? No, but we definitely know that glucagon is a culprit here. And I'm sure that the cortisol signaling, which we'll discuss in a second, is part of that as well. Um, and, and the other thing is we, you saw it as you directly saw it for yourself when we, I didn't have that, that same response that you do, but your cholesterol, when we, when we were like 20, what, 21, 22 years old in, in college was like, what is like suit like in the high 200s or something or yeah, it was like 278 i think was the highest I, I got it and we see that with other clients now too like i have clients who i'm working with whose cholesterol is in the 300s coming off carnivore and then mm-hmm. it's like do they need a statin no <laughs> they need to eat more carbohydrate get their get their uh insulin sensitivity working lower that glucocorticoid response lower that glucagon response and then increase their thyroid function there's a whole bunch of other sensing factors that are involved there with some of like the 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 uh, more specific um like gene expression stuff but overall it's the same it's like same thing we have every time like we work with somebody who's coming from from that piece they come with high cholesterol you change their diet within a couple months their cholesterol is back down to pretty much normal limits and it wasn't because we gave them a statin or red red yeast rice extract or something to inhibit the HM, HMG CoA enzyme yeah and it's also not we're not doing this because we think that cholesterol is going to clog up the arteries either just for reference it's not we're not subscribing to that outdated idea either i'll reference back to our our uh, discussions on cholesterol our previous episodes our series we did on cholesterol just to, uh yes. f- for people who are yeah wanting to understand more about that i did want to say i've seen clients with the cholesterol of over 400 i know you said <laughs> over 300 but yeah, yeah it, it does that and i also wanted to mention I've seen these very clear stress uh, symptoms on a low carb diet in people who are very particular about getting enough sodium. You know, they're taking salt tablets and doing a lot to get enough sodium, and that has not been enough to stop that stress response. And that's because sodium doesn't make up for the energy deficit that's there, even though it does help to uh, reduce the adrenal response for other reasons. But yeah, so I just wanted to throw that in because I know that's something that uh, Rob talks a lot about 